Good morning, Messiah Christian Church. Today is the last day to bring in your Operation Christmas Child Box. Thank you all for participating. We plan to pray over them as a church before they head off on their journey to bless a child. Today is the day we've been waiting for, the Fall Family Festival. Please join us after service today for a costume parade and a trunk or treat. You'll get to vote for your favorite decorated trunk. Look for the table with the ballot box. There'll be other games and a scavenger hunt. There'll be food from the food truck. It's so much fun every year and we hope to see you all afterwards. Our Starting Point program begins after church on October 31st. This is a great program to grow your faith regardless of where you are in your path. And if you're new to the church, it's a wonderful way to connect. Please see Amanda, Ruth, or Butch with any questions. And if you're online, leave a comment and someone will reach out to you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Messiah Christian Church. We're so glad that you're here to join us today and worship God. Um, if this is your first time here, thank you for coming today. We're so glad to have you. And we also wanted to welcome those of you who are joining us online. Um, welcome, and if you are joining us for the first time, also please go down to the comments section and fill out a Connect card so we can get to know you a little bit better. Um, so today is our Missions Sunday, and we're going to recognize the many missionaries around the world who are serving, and in particular, the missionaries that we here at Messiah support. So when you came into church today, you received a green piece of paper, and it has names and addresses of our missionaries, and those missionaries are on the front line of the battle. And today, we wanna put a special focus on praying for them and lifting them up and encouraging them in all the various parts of the world where they're serving and also we just want to ask you to send them a card or a package to encourage them and we actually have extra greeting cards in the foyer if you'd like to grab some to send out this week and if you'd like to also make a donation to any of our missionaries the card also contains all of that information that you would need to make a donation and if you're online and you'd like to participate please just say in the comment section right now Please provide me with the information and we will send it out to you. So our missionaries are ministering on the front lines of this spiritual battle that we've been talking about. Today, Pastor is going to be preaching about the helmet of salvation or the mindset that we are to assume in this battle. The writer of Hebrews says, you have this hope of a future fulfillment the final aspect of your salvation. Salvation is an anchor of the soul. So this morning, we're going to worship the Lord for this great gift of salvation. So if you could all stand with me this morning. We're going to worship God singing, Blessed Be Your Name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name, oh, blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name, oh, every blessing. Pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed your name when the sun's shining down on me when the world's all as it should be blessed be your name blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering though there's pain in the offering 
Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be be your name Jesus blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your glorious name blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name Jesus blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your glorious name may all be seated. Good morning. So this summer in youth group, uh, we did a program called Secret Church, and the kids learned about different countries where the gospel is restricted and sometimes illegal. Um, it really opened our eyes to what is going on in other countries. Christians are forced to worship in secret places. Um, they're tortured mm -hmm. if they are caught. They're put in prisons and sometimes even killed. In some countries right now, pastors are being taken out of their churches while preaching and being beaten. Some of the activities we did seemed kind of silly um, to us as we participated in mock kidnappings, we did prison scavenger hunts, we worshiped quietly in basements at people's homes and um, even in the basement here in our utility room. It's really hard for us here to actually relate to what is going on but these are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And when you think about that, it's, it's heartbreaking. So the drama that some of our youth are about to perform is dedicated to those in prison now in those countries, whether it's a literal prison, um, whether it's a mental prison, um, and it's also dedicated to many who have lost their lives um, for Christ. You are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper Underneath your breath I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true, I will rescue you. There is 
is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be your shelter. I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send down an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true. I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight. It's true. I will rescue you. I hear you whisper under your breath I hear you whisper you have nothing left I will send down an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night it's true Amen. Thank you so much for that. Um, all choked up already. So I want to thank you all for your blessings for Operation Christmas Child. I love that the stack is growing over there. And some of the countries that are represented by their, what they, their drama today, Samaritan's Person Operation Christmas Child is working to get into those, even those difficult closed countries. Your boxes may find their way there that gospel opportunity may find that child. So all I want to say is I got to say, wow. I mean, we put out the challenge that you guys would do 200 boxes and like, holy cow, look at all those gospel opportunities there. Thank you. Give yourselves a big round of applause there for all of that. <laughs> Every single shoebox here represents a gospel opportunity. And we know that the Bible in its word tells us that his word will not return void. That gospel opportunity is fun, it's full of toys and fun things, but it also comes with a gospel message, and we know that child is going to be blessed by it. Operation Christmas Child is a new emphasis here at Messiah Christian Church for uh, ministry, and I love that um, Messiah is committed to seeing the world come to Christ in the knowledge of Jesus as their Savior, and this is just one of the ways that Messiah is doing that through Operation Christmas Child. Many of these children will also be invited to a 12-lesson discipleship program to strengthen and challenge and grow in their faith as well. Some of you packed your box with children and grandchildren, and some of you even shared Operation Christmas Child with your coworkers and got them excited as well. So what a great outreach, a great opportunity, a way to reach even more people um, outside of Messiah with Operation Christmas Child and just learning more about Jesus and what he has in store for us. If you haven't finished your box, don't worry. There's still a couple more weeks to get those boxes back in here. And if you didn't get a chance to fill one and you want to, there are some here. Or if you just want to bless another child, there are a few boxes left in the foyer, and I'm happy to get more, however many we need. Prayer is the foundation for this ministry. We can't live without it. We can't function without it. We have to talk to God. 
the most important thing to put in a box is prayer. So I, I invite you this morning to extend a hand, or if you're close by and you want to come up, put, a box, put your hand on a box. We're going to have a moment of prayer and dedication and blessing over our shoe boxes this morning. So let us pray. Father God, I want to thank you for everyone here, for their thoughtfulness and their dedication to seeing children's lives reached with the gospel of Christ. I pray your blessing on them for their faithfulness in doing the good work for your kingdom. Father, I pray for these boxes, these gospel opportunities. I pray for you to protect them along their journey. I pray that you open doors in countries for safe passage. I pray that you soften the hearts of customs officials to allow them through without hassle. And for the children, I pray. I pray that you would direct each box each one to the child that it was intended for, that that child's heart would be open to receiving the message and that they would be ready to receive you as Savior. I pray they are challenged to grow in their faith through the discipleship program and that others in their family and their community would also come to a saving knowledge of you through this simple shoebox gift. Thank you for the opportunity to reach children through this ministry. I pray for your blessing on Samaritan's Purse and Operation Christmas Child as they go forth to spread the gospel, even into the most difficult of situations. Thank you, Father, for your kindness and your mercy to us. I give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Um, I want to remind you, um, we still have a need uh, for Tom and Diane. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for us to be a blessing to them. They need a, a house, apartment, or a rent. If you know anybody or you have some place that they can stay, uh, they really want to stay here in Maine. And uh, they're asking for our help. And it's a great opportunity for us to be a blessing to them. So. Keep your eyes open. If you know of anybody or anything, uh, please let me know, and I'll share that with them. If uh, you're a visitor, you received a welcome packet when you arrived. There's a visitor card inside there. We'd love it if you just fill it out, put it in our offering plate. But uh, let's give to the Lord this morning. Um, we have a lot of opportunity, amen? Uh, these missionaries, these boxes, uh, it's a difficult time, but how many know with difficulties, there's lots of opportunity. And that is very much true today. But I want to encourage you as you give. Um, Ephesians, we've been going over, Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in his mighty power. And that includes uh, our giving too. That as we give, we're strong in the Lord. Uh, we have a big world to reach every nation, every tribe, but uh, God is more than able, amen? So as we give today, let's just uh, bow our heads. Uh, in a minute on the screen, a slide will come up for various ways for you to give. It's also a link in our Facebook comment section. It goes directly to our PayPal. Let's, let's bow our head in prayer. Our Heavenly Father God, uh, we thank you for the freedom we have in this country. We thank you, God, uh, that we can give. We know the needs, not just here, but across our world. Lord, they are our brothers and our sisters. So, God, we give freely because it's your kingdom, God. You're building it. You're leading people to yourself, especially these children, God. May we give. May we be generous because, God, uh, we know that you're at work right at this particular time in history. Receive our giving. Bless it. Use it, God, for the building up of your kingdom. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen.
dismiss our, our children, our youth, to our children's church downstairs. You guys are dismissed. Don't forget to thank your teachers while you're downstairs. Well, today is our Mission Sunday, and uh, we're blessed today to have one of our own missionaries in church with us today. And I know some of you guys already know who she is, Gwen Conrad. She's with YWAM. How many of you guys know YWAM? Okay, a lot of you guys know about YWAM, Youth with a Mission. Uh, she is um, serving in Juarez, Mexico. Uh, we as a church, you guys, uh, have been supporting her as a missionary uh, for many, many years. Uh, she's the daughter of Grace and Gary Littlefield. <laughs> I'm sure you must be very proud of your daughter. Uh, they have been members of this church for 25 years. The main ministry in uh, Juarez um, is an orphanage home, uh, and there they have, I'm not sure how many children they have, but they are really providing a lot to these kids, uh, spiritual formation, education, food, shelter, and uh, Gwen has really been a really an important part of that ministry down there. She's been faithful to stay there through all the ups and downs, and it is not an easy place to serve God. Uh, and obviously, Gwen has been under uh, a lot herself. Uh, she has faced many battles in her life. And today, while she's with us, I thought she could tell you about some of the battles she's facing as a missionary of the gospel. So let's have a warm welcome for Gwen Conrad. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor. Wow, the worship today, the songs and the drama, I was very touched. And it's just wonderful to see your hearts for the nations and and the missionaries that are out there. So yes, thank you for partnering with me all these years. Um, when I adopted a couple of teena teenagers a few years back, I faced a few challenges. <laughs> um, and then later I adopted another one. And so yeah, there's a lot of challenges in that process. But when Pastor Dan and Rosemary asked me to share, a particular story came to mind. And that's when, when I got custody, it took about, uh, about 15 months to get the adoption finalized in Mexico. And then the next step was to go to the consulate to get visas to come into the US. And we thought that that would just be a normal process and no problems. We found out later that a part of that, there's a medical exam with a psychologist and stuff and we didn't, non we didn't know, but the psychologist, they're, they're like Mexi they're contractors, Mexican contractors, and sometimes they're a little power hungry and mean. <laughs> and we didn't know that, but my son had just turned 15, so he actually had to do a drug test and then go see this psychologist. And they're very slick and tricky, and they managed to convince him that his drug test was positive, which it was not and got him to say things that weren't actually true, but led them to write down a report that he had done drugs. Then they called, in, they called me in, they called the, the supervisor in too, and, she say, and, and so I'm seeing him looking in terror, I'm thinking maybe I don't know him well, maybe I don't know what's going on at his school, maybe, so, maybe he's been doing something wrong. And I couldn't tell, there was no chance to talk to him and get his side of the story. And so in my being naive also, um, the boss is saying, oh, it's not going to affect his visa, just sign here. And I'm looking at him, I'm doing that, and anyway, I got tricked too and I signed. Well, he did not get the visa. And so that started a very challenging time of um, just a season of, of hardship because my daughter had gotten her visa and had to live in the United States. I'm a single mom. Daniel could not get into the States. So it started about a 15-month period. No. For that part, it was only about nine month period of trying to parent two children in two countries. Thankfully, I had a great support system. So I would spend uh, two or three nights in Mexico with Daniel while somebody else was taking care of Lucy in the US and she was going to school there. And then I had a couple nights with her in El Paso with somebody else taking care of Daniel and going back and forth. And often we would all spend the weekend in Mexico. Lucy could come across for that. But yeah, it was just a real big time of challenge. And then also, knowing that his U.S. citizenship depended on getting him into the U.S. to do that part of the process. So, um, yes, just leaning on the Lord, and you'll hear more of this story later, but 
there we had challenges. How many of you would have done that? I mean, not only did she go there to minister to them, she adopted three of them. Thank you for doing that and taking those three kids, because uh, sure, there's a lot of challenges to doing that. Today we're in Ephesians 6, and we're talking about a battle, just like Gwen is in. And I want to remind you that success in the battle not only involves protection of your body, but it also requires protection of your mind. Because we know that the battle is where? In your mind. Because if you lose here, you lose, right? You guys understand that. The helmet, which we're going to be talking about today, really, it speaks about protecting of your mind. And in particular, the kind of thoughts that you guys think. Like when you hear her story, like when you think about your own life. Um... That's really what I want to talk with you about today. A big part of winning the battle has to do with your minds. I mean, you already know that, right? You're, you're all in the battle. If you lose up here, what? You're going to lose. You already lost. So the helmet of salvation provides us with the right mindset for battle, which I'm going to talk with you about today. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 tells us that we are to take every thought captive and you are to make it obedient to who? Jesus Christ. Take every thought you have, doesn't, I don't care what it is, and you make it obedient to Jesus Christ, right? So today we're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. And we can read this together with me. Ephesians 6, 17, what? Take up the helmet of salvation. So when we talk about taking up, I want to talk with you guys about taking on the right mindset. Okay? This is the fifth piece of armor that needs to go on every believer. And it's called the, what? The helmet of salvation. So Roman soldiers wore helmets. Paul knew that. And he, he knew that a blow to the head would be fatal, right? Why? Because that helmet would protect them. Helmets were mostly, in that Roman time, were made of solid metal. And the purpose for the helmet was what? To protect his mind and you need to put it on too because you need protection for your mind in roman battles they usually had a massive sword i brought one with me it would have been pretty large and with that sword as that enemy went to into battle with wayne uh, the enemy knew very easily is the best way to destroy him is the swiftest way would be what? To take his sword, which would be large, and to stand above him, in some way get above him, and absolutely just to come down with two hands, chop his head off. If the enemy did that, what? Battle would be over. And I want to say that to you, too. Because if your mind's not protected, you will be easily, easily destroyed. Yes or no? Understand it is really, really important for us. In this case, Wayne has on his helmet, so he's protected. Paul says, and I want you to connect this, Paul defines a helmet as the helmet of what? Helmet of what? Salvation. salvation. And I want to talk to you about the three phases of salvation. Thank you, Wayne. So let's go through these so you know. The first aspect of salvation is when we believed in our Lord Jesus Christ, we were saved from the penalty of sin, yes or no. God's word tells us in Ephesians chapter 3,
our sin. So Ephesians 1 clearly tells us that Jesus Christ dies on the cross for your sin and for mine. And when he did that, what happened to you? Because of his death, you are what? Free. Your first mindset is you are free. Not only are you free, but according to God's word, his death on that cross, his blood paid the price for your sin. Amen? How many of you have that as a mindset? I am free? Yes. I am forgiven? Yes. By the blood of Christ, and I am no longer guilty. How about you? Could you say that today? Or is your mind so messed up with the stuff you're going through you've forgotten? So let's practice. Your mindset, let's repeat after me. I am free. I am forgiven. I am not guilty. Do you believe that? I pray you do because that is your mindset. The second thing Second phase is that believers in Christ grow while you're on this earth and Christ himself will sanctify you. Second Timothy, chapter one, verse nine. You have your Bibles, do you have the scriptures up? No? Okay. Second Timothy, chapter one, verse nine. God has saved us. God has called us to a what? Holy life. Not because of anything you have done. Well, thank God for that. But because of God's own purposes. Because of God's own grace. So in this second phase of salvation, we are being saved continually from the power of sin. Amen? Why? Because Holy Spirit lives where? Inside of you. And he's a Holy Spirit. And he wants you to be holy. Amen? He saved us and called us for what reason? So that you might be holy. How many are rejoicing over that? How many that's your mindset? Good. That should be your mindset. <laughs> and when you get convicted about some area in your life, and God begins to work in there. You submit to that work. And you say, God, make me holy. I have a holy God living inside me. I will be holy because God is holy. All God's people said, is that your mindset? Is that your mindset? That's what I want to ask you. Because... You have to put on that helmet. And so as God works, rejoice over that. Amen? How many of you rejoice when God points stuff out to you and says, I don't want you going there. I don't want you talking that way. I want you to get rid of that unforgiveness, that anger, that bitterness, right? What is the Lord doing? He's sanctifying you. How many of you rejoice when God sanctifies you? Or how many of you get upset and say, oh, what a horrible day? Get your mind right. <laughs> It is a good thing when God makes us holy. So let's say it together. I am being sanctified. I will be holy. I am holy. That is your mindset. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Third phase of salvation speaks of glorification. Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. When Christ, who is your life, appears, we'll all rejoice at that day, right? Then you also will appear where? With him. In what? In glory. Is that your mindset? That when he comes back in glory, you will be found in him and it will be glorious for you. 
Yes or no? Do you think this way? <laughs> Get your helmet on, guys. Get your helmet on. This is the thoughts God's people need to have on. I like to say it this way. I'm in a battle, but I will go to heaven. How about you? Actually, when I go to heaven, it will be glorious. Do you guys have that as your mindset? How many of you do? You go, I am going to heaven. I'm struggling. I'm in a battle, but I know where I'm going. How many of you live like this? Like, that's your mindset. The, the battle doesn't overtake you. You have, you know where you're going. You are going where? To heaven. You will meet with a glorious God. The glory of God will be, it will be him in the present and every attribute that he has. His goodness, his faithfulness, his love for you, his glory, his grace, it'll all be present. And where will you be? Where will you be? You will be in glory. How many of you look forward to that day? <laughs> I hope you do. You can preach this message all over the world and God's people will all be rejoicing. Why? Because they have a mindset of salvation that they know where they're going. And that is really important. So let's say it together. I will be in heaven. Say it out loud. I will be in heaven. I am going to heaven. Just say it out loud. Praise God. Wow. These all have to do with a mindset. And when you have that mindset, even though you're in a battle, how many know you're being strengthened? You're in a battle, but you are being strengthened because you have the mindset. What? I am free. I am forgiven. God is sanctifying me. I'm going to heaven. I know where I'm going. Yes or no? And that thought strengthens you. Yes or no? How many of you are in this right now, but you just have this strength? You go, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm in a battle, but I'm okay. God is strengthening. Why? I got my helmet on. I'm thinking correctly about what's going on in my life. And if you don't think correctly, you will be destroyed. Put on the helmet of salvation. Understand. These three mindsets really are what Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 calls the hope of salvation. Listen, 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. But since we are of the day, number one, let us be sober in our mind. Number two, having put on the breastplate of faith, right, and love. And number three, put on your, put on your helmet. <laughs> Put on the helmet. The what? The, the hope. The hope of what? The hope of salvation. The helmet of salvation not only is your strength, but it is your what? It's your hope. Paul is actually saying, as you're in the battle, take up a hopeful mindset that comes with your salvation. How many of you are living like this? You have a hopeful mind. You are in a battle, yes. It is a war, yes. But you have a hopeful mindset. That is what he's saying. Take that up. Keep your mind hopeful. It comes with your salvation. And when a person comes up to you and tells you how bad the world is and how wicked things are, you just say... Yes, it is hard. Yes, it is difficult. But I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. I know where I'm going. I'm forgiven. I belong to God. I belong to his kingdom. Do you live like this? I hope you do. That helmet. <laughs> Please put on your helmet. Be sure you're thinking biblically about what's happening. Wow. I'm forgiven, I'm free, I'm holy, I'm going to heaven. You can fight your battle. 
right? You can fight your battle with those mind thoughts. I want you to think about the hardest situation you're facing right now. You guys know what it is? You know yours. Do you guys know what yours is? So take the hardest thing that's happening right now and apply those principles. It's very difficult for me to be in that situation. But I'm free. I am forgiven. I am holy. God's doing a work. I'm okay. I'm going to heaven. I'm seeing my, decide, my Messiah. I am a child of God. Put on that hat. Did you put it on? What happened when you put it on? You will have what? Hope. For sure. <laughs> Apply those truths. You'll find when your mind will go there, you will begin to think differently. I want to say it again. You will begin to think differently. How many of you can understand where we're going with this? How many of you are thinking differently? Why? Because of, your, because of your salvation I'm talking about. Because you understand those three phases of life. And because of that, you now, yes, you are in a battle, but now it's changing your whole thought life. That's right. That's exactly right. And that is why the helmet must go on. Your mind will start to change. You'll find your thoughts not going down and discouraged, I want to quit. Your thoughts will be, I'm okay, God's with me. Don't worry about it, I'm trusting my God. See, when you do that, you got your helmet on. And when you don't have your helmet on, all you do is go down. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Wayne has his helmet on. Thank you, Wayne. I asked you guys to bring a hat to church this week, and I pray today that you'll put your hat on. If you have it, put it on. Put your hats on now if you have it. But as you're putting it on, not, don't, I'm not just putting on a hat, I'm putting on a mindset. Put on a mind, take your hat, put on the mindset. It's more than a hat. It's protecting your mind, the thoughts I just gave you. Wow. So Paul is saying, in battle, put on a way of thinking. If you put on the way of thinking, I'm telling you to put on, you will find strength and you will find hope. Yes or no? Yes or no? Are you guys living that way? Or you say, oh, I don't have hope. I don't find any strength. Maybe your helmet's not on. Maybe you've never been taught this before. Maybe you've never read this scripture before. But you've heard it now. Put it on then. Put it on. Don't live like you don't know. Put it on. God will give you strength. The helmet of hope gives us three distinct advantages when you're in a battle. I want to go over these because there's much fruit when you do what God tells you to do. So let's go over them. The first advantage you have, you may be in a battle, but you're totally secure. First advantage is what? You are secure. You are fine. We have what we call eternal security. When we have this kind of promised invincibility, wouldn't you agree it changes the way you approach the battle you're in? Yes or no? Would it not change it? You would have to say yes, pastor. It would change it. Of course it would. Jesus said in John 10, 27, my sheep, what? Hear my voice. I know them and they what? They follow me, and I will give them what? I will give them what? Eternal life to them, and they shall never, ever perish? Never? Whoa. And no one, no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father has given them to me, 
and greater is he than all. And no one, absolutely nothing, no one can snatch him out of my hand. Yes or no? Those are words of Jesus Christ. How I many you know that's eternal security? But what comes with eternal security? Internal security. What comes with it? What comes with eternal security? Internal security. And all of God's people who understand said, yes, Pastor, I have eternal security and I have internal security, even though I'm in the middle of a war. Great benefit, amen? <laughs> people who are secure in victory, we are secure in the power of the words of Christ. We are secure in God's promises. You will approach your battle completely different than somebody else. Yes or no? Yes or no? You will say, I'm different than that person. Yeah, you will be. Why? Because there is a security that you have. Wow. People like this sacrifice their whole life. They give it away. They're under the power of the Spirit of God. They understand sanctification. They understand transformation. They understand the work of God, and they know where they're going when they die, and they're not afraid to live. Yes or no? Wow. Say it with me. I am secure. God will always protect me. God will never let me go. It's your mindset, right? That's what we're talking about. Advantage number two. When a Christian puts on the helmet of salvation, we know in the end, yes, we're in a battle today, but we know that we're going to heaven. And that all our suffering on this earth shall be over. Do you know that? Do you know that? <laughs> Please answer. Do you know that? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Therefore, because you have that helmet on, we do not, what? Lose heart. Though outwardly, we may be wasting away. Inwardly, you and I are being renewed day by day. For our light and our momentary troubles, we know they're there. They are achieving for you and for me an eternal glory. Yes or no? that far, far, far outweighs any trial and any difficulty that you're going through now. Is that how you think? I pray it is, because that is the truth. Wow. So, fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen in this world is temporary, yes, it's all fading away, it's all going away, everything is, but what is unseen is what? Eternal. Eternal. Wow. We are soldiers. Set your eyes on what is eternal. And when things get hard, focus on heaven. <laughs> when things get hard, focus on what you don't see, what you know is absolutely true. You'll be fine. You'll find hope and you'll find strength, just as God said he would give it to you. Yes or no? Wow. I know sometimes people get stuck in this world. I just want you to be clear. This whole world is fading away, amen? The government is what? Fading away. The materialism of this world is going to fade away. 
God's kingdom will come and it will last forever and ever and ever. And you will be with your God forever and ever. And you will be in his glory forever and ever and ever. Yes or no? Don't ever lose this. Some Christians have. I'm telling you right now. Do not lose this mindset. Wow. And those of you who are giving your life away, you will get your rewards when you get there. Yes or no? For those of you who are saying, I understand the battle, I'm trusting God through it, and I know on the other side, God is going to reward me because I put my trust in him. I will get eternal rewards. Yes or no? Not everybody will. Not every Christian will. You'll get your rewards. The hope of heaven is yours. <laughs> Say it with me. It will all be worth it. Do you believe that or not? Or am I just telling you to say something you don't believe? It'll all be worth it. Do you believe that or not? I do. <laughs> I believe what Jesus Christ said. It will all be worth it. We'll live differently. My relationship with God is going to last for ever. Ever. Forever. Wow. Advantage number three to those followers of Christ who put the helmet on. Live confidently in God's overcoming power. What's the third one? God's overcoming power power. 1 John 5, 4. For everyone, everyone means what? Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is your victory that has overcome the world, your faith. Wow. Advantage number three, overcoming. This is an eternal promise, yes or no? This is for everyone born of God, yes or no? This is for the person who says, I put my trust in Jesus Christ. They are what? Everyone who does that are what? Are overcomers. You know what the word overcome means? It means to conquer. It means you're going to have victory. And it means you're superior. Those three things, that's what it means. Do you have that mindset? Do you have that mindset? The promise of God, is that your mindset? You are an overcomer. You see, when you know that you are going to overcome, it'll anchor you. Yes or no? How many of you have experienced this? You're going through something, but you say, I'm fine. Why? Because you, there's an anchor in your soul that you know is going to see you through. Big difference from someone who's all upset all the time and doesn't understand. But you, anyone who really understands Christ and what he did for you, you've got an anchor for your soul. Yes or no? Wow. In the middle of the battle, you don't get discouraged. You see, when you're sure you're going to win, you will not be tempted to turn back or flee the battle you're in. Yes or no? People who understand this aren't running away. They're standing up. <laughs> they know they're going to overcome. Do you? <sighs> or do you think you're going through this and you're going to lose? Put your helmet on. Put your helmet on. Ah, <sighs> You have a superior position. You are on the winning side. And the truth is, you can't lose. You can't lose. All God's people said, amen. Your salvation protects you from the fatal blow that might crush your confidence. Yes or no? You are a child of God. You are one of his own. He bought you to come into his kingdom. Yes or no? Be confident. Wow. 
Heaven is your home. All blows attempting to crush your head will be deflected by the truth that you live by. By the truth that you understand in your mind that you live by. It will crush it. Yes or no? Wow. So, when you're battling with your own emotions, fear, guilt, shame, regret, nothing's going to work out. Focus your mind on the fact that you do have the overcoming power of Jesus Christ at your disposal. Yes or no? Understand it. Grab it. He's given it to you. You're not, you're not there without armor. You have his protection. You have everything you need to win that battle. Yes or no? Wow. Let's say it with me. I am an overcomer. Say it again. I am an overcomer. Everyone born of God overcomes this world. This is your victory. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Open up our eyes that we can see, Lord. How many of you can see yourself with the Lord? Do you have that kind of sight? You can look ahead. And you say, you know, I see myself with God. Can you do that? Raise your hand if you can do it, because you, you need to be able to do it. You just, just go there now. By faith. You go, whoa, I'm going to be with him. Yeah, you are. Oh, it's really hard. Yeah, but you're going to be with him. Oh, I can see myself with him. In his presence, the glory of God shining all around me. I'm fine. Yes or no? Or, or can you not see that? Look at what is unseen and not what is seen. Not what is seen, what is unseen. Yes or no? Live that way. I'm going to ask Gwen to come back and share her story about her battle that she was in. Come on up, Gwen. Let's listen to how she handled hers. Well, Pastor, it really ties with everything you're sharing. And just somehow, even being turned down for Daniel's visa, just knowing that we were overcomers, that he's God's child... He had already been rescued out of a home of alcohol and violence and put in this amazing children's home. Mm. He was being adopted. God had plans to prosper him and not to harm him, plans to give him a hope and an expected end. Mm. And so we found an amazing um, immigration lawyer, and he said what we need to do first to get through the hardship of parenting two kids on two, two countries, we need to get him a visa waiver. So put together this packet literally more than a, an inch thick, presented it, he's like, I don't know, they haven't been granted lately, so I don't know if it's gonna happen, but he was granted a visa waiver, a one-time entry into the US, so that at least then we could get him in school there, moving forward in life, but that did not make him eligible for citizenship, so we had to keep fighting. And so when the visa was denied, they did t the, the medical facility hmm. did say, what you need to do is start testing him every three months with the hair drug test to show that he's been clean for three months. Do that every three months so that when you come back again the next time, you can show that he hasn't been doing drugs. The lawyer also said when you go back, you have to admit to what you admitted to before and then, and then they will consider it. Well, Daniel was taught not to lie. So now he understands that he never did drugs. He had, I think years before, one time in a school bathroom, somebody had offered it, he started to put it to his mouth and literally gave it back. He's like, no, I know I can't do that. And he ran out of there. Wow. But in the, the original thing, he thought he had done drugs, which he had not. But anyway, so we go back um, mm. and he's supposed to say that he had done this and this and this according mm. to what they had written down the other time and he couldn't do it. Mm. And, and so I'm in there with him. I'm realizing we're not doing what the lawyer said. The lawyer's going to be frustrated with us. We walk out, and, and I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. So I call the lawyer, tell him the story, and he says, sure enough, he was frustrated with us. He's like, you know, I've been helping you. We've been working on this. I told you to do this. You didn't do it. I don't know what's going to happen. So we walk out pretty discouraged. But we had forgotten to pick up his passport in that medical facility. So after I talked to the lawyer, the next day we go back and, and we're, we park, we're going back mm. in. I go, Daniel, we are going back into the lion's den. Mm. We are going back. And all this time people have been praying. We've been clinging to the Lord, clinging to the scriptures. Mm. Um, 
We go back in, and I asked to see the boss, the one that had tricked me, the, you know, the year and a half before. And, um, and I'm like, look, here's all the, the, the evidence that he's been clean this year and a half. And she's like, well, why didn't you say so? Like, the other guy had not asked when he was put, like, yeah, the other interrogation, he hadn't asked that question. So the boss is like, well, why didn't you say so? You know, I've already sent the papers to the consulate. I don't know if I can get them back and change things. But she managed to, and so, um, so finally he was granted a visa to come to the U.S. Praise God. <laughs> and so that, that turned out well, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it was like, I mean, but God fought the battle for us mm -hmm. and just clinging to the scriptures, mm -hmm. knowing that, mm -hmm. that when we're weak, mm -hmm. he is strong and mm -hmm. God's grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. We don't just hope it's sufficient, but God's grace <laughs> is, sufficient. is sufficient. And he gives us strength when we're weak and that's what he walked with us through it. And, and then we were able to, because we got that visa, we were able to apply for citizenship and he got it just in time before he turned 18. And what doors that has opened has been amazing. So, yeah. Wow. God is faithful. Woohoo! Go God. Thank you. Wow. I, I love that scripture. It, it, his grace is sufficient. Not might be, right? It is, right? Do <laughs> you believe that? <laughs> Get your mind right. <laughs> Get your mind right. Get your salvation. Understand your salvation. Understand your position. Understand the promises God's given you. And live by them. Live by them. Amen? Closing today, why don't we stand? And I want to sing this song. Sing it with me. Amen? Rejoice. Shining 
the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, and I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Oh. As we were singing, I got a word for somebody here. I don't know who it's for, but if it's for you, please take it. Fear not, for I am with you. Anyone owning that? A couple of you? Good. Fear not. Fear not. I, I, God, am with you. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. I, God, am with you. Nothing can stop my power. You live for me. Will you, will, you, will you receive it? <laughs> I pray you will. <laughs> wow. In a minute, I'd like to open up uh, the altar. And if you're facing one of the two kinds of situations, first, you may not have experienced salvation. You're here today and you're hearing me talk about the benefit of it, the hope of salvation, and you want it? For the first time, you get it, like, oh my goodness, that's salvation? I want it. Good. Good. I'm going to invite you to come forward. I'm going to have the altar workers come up. Please come, the altar workers. I'm going to ask you to come. Come on up, guys, we're going to pray. And if you're here, and you're like, I, I want to be forgiven. I... I want to know I'm going to heaven. I, I, I want to know God loves me. Today's the day. Open up your hearts and come up. But there's a second group of people I want to talk to. And that's you Christians who are here, but you don't have the helmet on. You're going through a battle and you go, hey, pastor, all the things you said about security and overcoming and power, I don't have any of that mindset. Make a commitment now to live that way. Make a commitment to put on your helmet, okay? You're still alive? You're still alive? You may be 80, but you're still alive? You think your life is over? It's not. Today, today you come to God, and you say, God, I'm, I'm putting on the helmet of salvation to secure me, to give me victory, to know where I'm going, to have overcoming power of God. If that's you, if you're one of those, come. Come and let these people pray. Just get out of your seats and come. Come to your Lord. Come to your Savior. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We love you, God. We bless your name. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. When I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands up to high. Oh, God, the battle belongs to mm -hmm. you. And every fear I lay at your feet, oh, I sing God. through the night. Oh, God, the battle, battle belongs, belongs to you. you. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every 
you, Lord. And almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. An almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. An almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Everything. I lay at your feet, I sing through the night, oh God, the battle belongs to you. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear God, we just uh, thank you for this morning, God. We thank you for the helmet of salvation. We thank you, Lord, you're clear with us to put it on, Lord. Put on the helmet of salvation, Lord. We hear your word, God. We obey you, God. We know the power. We know your direction. We know, God, the outcome, God. We obey you. We submit, God, to your word, your will. And, God, as we leave this place, fill us, God. Give us great strength, great courage in the time we're living in, God. Open up our eyes, Lord, that we might see what's really happening, not in the natural, God, but in the supernatural, Lord. May we turn our hearts towards you. May you, God, do great and mighty things, God. May we come to a great realization, Lord, of who you are. We praise you and we honor you. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Before we go, don't forget, outside we have our a party. Please stay, enjoy yourself, enjoy your time with your kids. The truck is out there. Ooh.